Hey, what's up? We're back again, and we're reviewing Tales from the Trails, Mexico. There's a lot of gloss on it, so you can't really see the title, but it is, I promise you. Let's see if you can actually read from that side. Let's see? Yeah. Anyway, into business. Now, I found this product actually, it's not immediately as useful as some of the other ones, as this is based south of the border. I mean, if your campaign starts south of the border, this is great right off the bat. If you plan on going south, great, but immediately it doesn't have as much use as the other ones. However, I think it's still a great product. It's got a lot of stuff in it. So we'll get underway. The beginning starts with a little story, the, the, calm, the, the, storm, the calm and the storm that follows. It's Legend of the Garu. It's it's a fairly interesting read. I liked it. I'm not going to spoil it just in case you want to read it. But I found it a very good story. And it goes into the theme and mood. Then we get right into the history. Told from the t from the point of view of a newish. I believe it is um, the same newish that we had in the other one. Let me see. Yeah, Laughing Miniskins. Yep, that's who it is. So yeah, it is the same one from previous books. And it's a fairly long history, and it's an interesting read. It details the Second War of Rage, um, Mexico before the Second War of Rage, changing times, you know, how things have changed up to right now. And, you know, it just kind of gives an overview of the area and what the changing breeds have done. You know, the Ananasi, the... Uh, what are they? The uh, Were Ravens, the, you know, what the newish actually did. So you get a really good feel for how Mexico is. Next up, we go into geography. We get the Central Plateau, the Pacific Lowlands, the Gulf Coast Plain, Yucatan Peninsula, Isles Mueras, yeah, the Southern Highlands, the Baja California P Peninsula. Then we get into the major settlements. Now, this is really. They're only like, I don't know, one, two, three, I mean, they're, they're short little bits, like three paragraphs, and you know, they're columns, so it's not even big paragraphs. But we get uh, information on Tijuana, Suidad Juarez, I'm slaughtering these names because I do not speak Spanish, uh, Ptic, Hermosila, Hermosilo, Ch Chihuahua, Nuevo Lardo, C A J E M E. I'm not even going to try and say that one. Monterrey and Matamorso, Culiacan, San Luis Potosi, Tampico, Guadalajara. I thought there was one more after Guadalajara. Oh, and then Mexico City. Mexico City got a lot. That's all Mexico City. So. Being the capital and everything, based in the old Aztec capital of uh, Tenochtitlan. Yeah, that's how it's pronounced. I had to find the word on the map. <laughs> and we get a fair good bit of information about it, how it's set up, what it is now, a little bit of the history of it, and, you know, how it is up to 1865, it looks like. Then we go into the people of Mexico. This details, you know, in general, the different faction groups like humans. Uh, there's a brief overview at first where we talk about the Red Talon, the Camarilla, the Sabat. Camarilla being, for anyone who doesn't know, Vampire the Masquerade. The Camarilla are the ones who uphold the so called masquerade that the vampires go with. The Sabat are the ones who don't necessarily uphold it. They're kind of like the rebels. Then we get werewolves in Mexico. We don't get werewolf names. We just kind of get an overview of the faction of the Garu. And a little bit how each tribe interacts with it. Then we get the Los Bestias de Mexico. They're the Ananasi. At least that's the majority of them. We get um, ba -ba -ba. I believe this is Wraith, new house of GP Toltec. It's a 
I believe it's a Wraith um, house of action. I've never played Wraith once again, so I really don't know much about Wraith. I rarely pay attention to the Wraith parts. Uh, then we get a big entry on vampires, how the Camarilla work, how the Sabat work in this area. Uh, Black Spiral Dancers. Did I miss a page? No. I just jumped right into them. The Dead. Uh, the Boltos. The Flayed Ones. I mean, these are all just types of dead. Let me get the five days of the dead that are celebrated by Mexico. The Day of the Orphaned Soul. The Day of the Unpardoned Soul. Day of Children. Uh... Where's the fifth one? It's the third day. The fourth. It right, doesn't give the names of the fourth and fifth day. But I believe it's like um, All Saints Day and um, All Holidays. I believe that's what they are. Not positive though because they don't give names. But in game terms, the Days of the Dead are times when the local shroud drops by two points or three, whatever the celebration is being performed. Needless to say, they are indeed five days for great rightly activity. So, essentially you can play a game those days where your Garu are, you know, they're riding about looking for, you know, Kjarns, or however they're pronounced. And, uh, they come to a, a, little, silly, a little settlement during one of these Days of the Dead. And wraiths then begin acting up. And, you know, they start messing with the werewolves. Well, now you've got something to do where the werewolves would want to, you know, fight against these raids and stop them from causing all kinds of hell. But, I digress. Next is we get, it's called the bad and the ugly, but it's just the, um, the, uh, antagonists. You get information on your black spirals, your hell pit high, which is a black spiral, um, what is it? It's it's, like a, it's just a hive for the black spiral. You get, uh, I believe this is a black spiral. Yeah, it, the leader of the Hell Pit Hive is Harzo Matuli. It's got a little picture for him. And we get um all his information, his breed, his auspice, tribe, obviously black spiral, and then his gifts and everything. We get Almatza Dortos. We get Barago, so we got an Arun, we got Galliard, we've got another Arun, Philodox is Thalan Morg, War Dog is a Ragavash. So, I mean, right there we've gotten a little bit of information for notable black spirals that we could use in a campaign if we wanted to, say, have our Garu fight black spiral directly in Mexico as the entire plot. Maybe they even try and bring down the Hell Pit Hive. Then we move into the Balam. They are the Wear Jaguar. And they pretty much fall into the worm without knowing it. Because of their hate for the Garu, they've essentially become blind and let the worm spirit into them. But it gives a little bit of information about the Balam. It gives uh, a couple of facts. They give you all their forms. So you get their version of Glabro, Kronos, Hispo, and Lupus, which are Socto, Kronos, Chatro, and Feline, respectively. We get a sample. We get Ride, Rides the Serpent as a Balam. We get... Uh, we get Matulo. Calls to the Past. Skins the Foolish. And that's it for them. So we get all their information like we did for the Black Spiral. We get their gifts, we get their background, everything. And the gifts, they use the Garu gifts. So you don't have to worry about having to buy new books for the Balam if you want to use them in your group. You can just use Garu gifts. Next we move into the section for vampires. Vampires are a really big part of Mexico due to the fact that it's really a big part where the Sabat are coming down and trying to take Mexico from the Camarilla, from the Garu, from the other changing breeds. So they're a really big part. They could be a very, very interesting plot arc if you wanted to. The first one we get is the Boot Hill Gang, which is also mentioned before in The Calm and the Storm That Follows, which is the uh, Garu legend at the very beginning. 
we get their leader, Joseph Boothill. And we get all of we get his clan and his stuff. The powers he uses He just used lupus gifts as his vampire power. Because they don't like you to have to have your vampire book, have your whatever book. Also because Garu could rip apart a vampire one on one. So otherwise with it would be no fun if your enemy didn't have capabilities to kill you and stop you. By the way, Joseph Bootle is an Asimite. Anti Tribune, obviously. We get Jack Dawson, who is a Semedi. We get Apache Jones, Malkavian. Lucy Markowitz, Lusombra. Ja Janie Pickman, Gangrel. Alejandro Aguirre is a Tremere. And that, and we get all their stats. So we, once again, we get the, you know, hierarchy of another organization. We get Las Mamias, the mummies, and we get a good information on mummy because I honestly I needed it because I never have seen Mummy: The Resurrection score book. Not that I think I'd ever really want to play it. I don't really know how you could play Mummy: The Resurrection, but I'll leave that to, for someone else to make a video and explain to me. Um. We get Malinch, a mummy, and all of their stuff. We're using powers of gifts. Uh, we get Mictlan. And then we get the Flayed Ones. They're, which, as I uh, suspected, they're wraiths of the dead who have been touched by the power of the Storm Eater. Yeah, and then placed in the bodies of recently sacrificed. So essentially you sacrifice a person, and then a wraith might accidentally come through and inhabit said body. And that's really it for this book. So, I found it useful for playing in Mexico. It also gives a little bit of an insight into what the goings-on of some of the other uh, World of Darkness factions are. So, I found it useful. I don't know, you can pick it up for a thing. 10 bucks on Amazon, something like that. But I found it useful, and until next time, have a good one.